Uh, uh, I think that's for storytelling. That's what we got for storytelling tonight. And then we have Sareth from Daytona. He's actually from Colorado. Um, but, you know, he's the funniest, clean, dirty, raunchy <laughs> comic who doesn't cuss. That it's, I'm glad you guys are here. You, you, he, you're in for a treat. Uh, Sareth is uh, a treasure. So, uh, Sareth Ney, we'll finish it off for the night. Here we go. Oh, okay. All right. Woo! Woo! At what? 14. 14. So as Rob said, I perform mostly in Daytona Beach, and Daytona is known for the Daytona 500, and I want to play the race card game with you all. Which race do you think I am? Oh God. <laughs> well, people think I'm black, Thai, Samoan, Vietnamese, but I'm Cambodian. And whenever I go to bars, my pickup line is, if you be my Angelina, I can promise you a Cambodian baby. <laughs> Sometimes it works. <laughs> so, um, I'm Cambodian and my parents, back in the 70s, they escaped the Khmer Rouge and the bullets were flying back and forth. And they looked at each other and they said, you know, if we spend another holiday in Cambodia, we're gonna end up dead like the Kennedys. <laughs> so they got, they crossed over to the mountains and they went into another country and they saw Sylvester taking out, taking out weekend crops, dropping, drawing first blood. And my mom was like, I guess there's no more stuff from Succotash. <laughs> and they went to the next country over, and we saw Arnold taking out predators. <laughs> and my sister goes, there's more predators in Cambodia, take those out too. <laughs> so they all got into the chopper as in, as, Arnold told him to, and they look over to the pilot, and they said, hey, um, where are we going? And the pilot turns around and says, we're coming to America like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> so they all landed in Colorado, and that's where I was born, as Rob said. And for them to stay in America, they have to have an anchor baby. <laughs> and Cambodia is known for the temple Angkor Wat, so I guess I was an Angkor baby. <laughs> So, um, like most Asian kids, I got my very first job at the age of nine. <laughs> so you can thank me for your soccer balls and your tennis shoes later. <laughs> but I was actually a dishwasher at my parents' Chinese restaurant. And it took me back to Natalie's story about the cats. And if you ever wondered where the term the doggy bag came from, or it's raining cats and dogs, it came from a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining outside, so... Uh, <laughs> I know because I made the puppy chow mein. <laughs> but it was actually, it was a wild time for sure. And I am, as Rob said, I'm known as the cleanest, dirtiest comic in Daytona Beach because I say really dirty things without saying any curse words. And so from this point on forward, it's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of 1974. It starts off nice and easy. From, yeah, it's in the rear view now. <laughs> but then when Leatherface appears, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and this is when hell, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Rob was talking about unrelated titties earlier. And I remember the first time I saw my unrelated titty. Um, it, was, it was a September 1997 issue of Playboy. <laughs> uh, Jenny McCarthy and Pamela Anderson were in it. And those were my first unrelated titties. <laughs> And um, it used to belong to my uncle, and he, I stole it from him when I was 15 years old. And I didn't know how much, how much he cried during sex. Like all the pages were all wrinkly, and they were all stuck together. <laughs> I thought they were his tears and his boogers, but they weren't. They were his knuckle babies and his water-based lube. <laughs> and my mom found it, and she tore it right in front of me. And it saddened me because it reminded me of the Oklahoma City bombing because all the dead babies came out of it. <laughs> so when I was 18 years old, I went to my very first strip club. And it turned out it used to be an old church. And my very first lap dance came from a lady that looked exactly like Marilyn Manson. 
<laughs> she walked up to me like she was my own personal Jesus. She turned out to be an antichrist superstar. She was one of the beautiful people. She put on a dope show. And that night I had sweet dreams. It was fantastic, folks. Oh, man. What else happened at 18 that I want to share? Um, there was an adult bookstore down the street from there. And I remembered there was like these fists attached to arms behind the clerk. And one was made out of, they're both made out of latex, and one was black. And one looked like they just won the Olympics, it looked like that. And the other one looked like, like it was hailing Hitler, but with rheumatoid arthritis, and it looked like that. <laughs> and they're like, I said, hey, clerk, what are those used for? He goes, there's an adult arcade in the back. The movie's called Five Finger Donkey Punch. <laughs> and um, it's turned count 27. And um, you'll see what those fists are used for. So I go back there, and this cream looked like it was sponsored by Krispy Kreme. <laughs> there was a white lawn chair in there with a brown skid mark, but I didn't sit down. <laughs> and I popped in my token, Five Finger Donkey Punch comes on, and there was a fist in someone's bum. And I thought I was watching Citizen Kane, because when they pulled it out, it looked like a rosebud. And I leaned into the TV and I said, Rosebud. Just like Citizen Kane. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. In my mid-20s, my parents thought it would be a good idea to send me to Thailand by myself. Um, Bangkok to be specific. And um, I remember going to, my uncle says, you're here by yourself, let's have some fun. So he takes me to a strip club. Another one. I was thinking, maybe it was just like my Marilyn Manson lady. But nope, it was called the lollipop. There was ping pong balls everywhere, mirrors, poles. And my uncle turns over to me and says, hey, uh, nephew, we got to leave here at midnight. Because if, they're, if we don't, they're not quite ladies. And they're not quite boys. <laughs> they're lady boys. <laughs> And I'm like, 11.59 hits, and we leave. And we get into a tuk-tuk. And I looked over to my uncle, and I said, you know, if I ever become a lady boy, my nickname would be Tuk-Tuk Norris. <laughs> or Tanya Tucker. <laughs> so, there was a, um, the following day, I was just nervous. So my uncle goes, maybe it's best that you make some friends our translator here in Bangkok, and he'll take you to a massage parlor. Now, it was my very first time going to one of these massage parlors, and my translator is Thai, and people thought I was black there, because I'm really dark, not gravity Asian. So it was like rush hour two all over again. I was like, Chris Tucker, he was my Jackie Chan. And we picked our ladies, and they followed us to the bathroom, so it went from the set of Rush Hour 2 to the set of Hostel. <laughs> I said, if we separate, they're going to dismember us and we'll never see our families ever again. So we all four of us shared a room together. And they started off taking off all their clothes, except for me. And my lady goes, why aren't you taking off all your clothes, Sareth? I said, because I'm a virgin and I don't want to lose it this way. <laughs> so my buddy ends up getting a threesome right in front of me. My lady puts, put a rear naked choke on him, like Ronda Rousey. The other lady soaps up her body like a loofah, water and soap and all. And she treats his body like a slip and slide, and he gets a chub, three inches up. And she was really talented. She put a condom in her mouth, applied it on him, and the sex lasted three minutes. It was like a minute and an inch. <laughs> and so they wrap up, and my lady comes up to me, and she goes, so you're a virgin, huh? I'm like, yes, I am. So you're Superman. I'm like, I guess I am. And you're my kryptonite. <laughs> so the following Monday was the first day of class, and my teacher goes, all right, Sareth, um, why did you um, uh, give us an adjective that's the same first letter as your name? 
I said, because I was called Superman, uh, I'm going with Super Seraph. And he goes, why are you going with Super Seraph? I said, because I was called Superman at the Bangkok Massage Parlor, and it's a long story. <laughs> and that story is called So Much For My Happy Ending. It's dedicated to Avril Lavigne, because it's complicated. <laughs> so I graduated college, and I moved out to Los Angeles. And um, I visited this very gay friendly part of town called West Hollywood. And there's this crosswalk that was all rainbow colors, all the way around. And I thought by crossing it, I'd run into a leprechaun and get a bag of Skittles. <laughs> but I didn't. I ran into this big gay bear with a nice whip. And by nice whip, I mean a BMW. He says, hey, cub. I'm like, I'm not a cub. I'm a Rockies fan. I'm from Colorado. You should go to a bathhouse. I didn't know what a bathhouse was, folks, because I'm from Colorado. We only know what outhouses are. <laughs> so I go to this place. And it had all these holes in the walls. And I thought I had a termite problem. <laughs> but it didn't. Because out of nowhere, this pecker hits me right in the back of the leg. <laughs> and I'm like, what the Tanya Harding is going on around here? <laughs> and from another wall, this pecker hits me right in the face. And I'm like, put the Ronda Rousey. <laughs> then from another wall, I see some guy's face. And I said, hey, mister, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to feed you snacks? <laughs> He's like, no, you're supposed to put your pecker to this wall. I'm like, there's no duct team around this hole. I'm not getting splinters on any wood. <laughs> so his pecker comes to the wall. And there's three peckers facing me. And rock music comes on. And I thought it was Judas Priest. It wasn't. It was Iron, Iron Maiden. I was inside with an Iron Maiden full of peppers, folks. <laughs> and I stuck around to see what the next song would be, and it was Come Together by the Beatles. Because if you think about it, that song goes, Come Together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> and I was drenched, folks. <laughs> Head to toe in man gravy, and it was so salty, just like my exes. I look like I just have dealers on a Black Friday sale because I had a pearl necklace and pearlers and pearl bracelets to match. <laughs> so I moved back home to Colorado and my dad goes, son, I feel really bad. I didn't get to teach you about the birds and the bees. Let's go to YouTube together. I'm like, dad, it's okay. I just got man gravy over me and I turned down a happy ending massage. <laughs> he goes, I insist. Let's go to YouTube. I'm like, dad, that's not how it works. Let's go to Pornhub together. <laughs> so my dad and I went to Pornhub together. <laughs> and on the top right hand corner of the screen says all the HD. And I thought the HD stood for hard dingling. <laughs> but it doesn't. It stands for high definition. <laughs> and we clicked on it, and there was a brand new acronym on the left hand side of the screen that was DP. And I'm a filmmaker, so I thought DP was director of photography. But it doesn't. <laughs> It stands for double penetration, and when we clicked on it, it looked like two giraffes sitting on the same tree. It was wild, folks. <laughs> so, I um, I ended up going. On, uh, I moved out to Florida, and I did. I was. I went on a date, and I didn't know I was on a date. Ever happened to you all? Well, this happened probably like two years ago, and it was a very old man, and. He goes, he kept on calling me Charlie because he knew that I was Asian. <laughs> and I'm like, look, he paid for dinner and he gave me a hundred bucks. And he says, all right, stop calling me Charlie. As long as you keep your Willy Wonka away from my chocolate factory, we're going to be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I made my way to Florida and um, from Colorado. So I guess you could say that I went from marijuana to bath salts. <laughs> and from 420 to 8 your face. <laughs> Alrighty folks, I'd like to give it up for Laura and Natalie and Rob and you all for, having, for being here. Thank you. Give it for our box. Hopefully there will be more shows like spoken word and storytelling and stand up. And my name is Serethne. Uh, have a good evening and we will see you next time. Thank you.